Hi guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Police Quest 3. I'm Zerfall, and last time, Marie just had something terrible happen to her. We're not sure exactly what. She might have been kidnapped. But we know one thing for sure. Sonny has no idea what's going on. He wasn't there during the cutscene. So, all we know is we have a call from dispatch, and we've got to answer that call right now. Oh, there he goes, shrinking again. Oh, now his hair is black. That's one of the side effects of shrinking, I suppose. Let's grab the phone. And you know what? You have to sit down when you're on the phone. You can't just pick it up while you're standing there. Respond to an assault at the 300 block of East Rose. The Oak Tree Mall. Alright, so now we got to stand back up, because Sonny had to sit down. Away we go. I'm going to try to use that top menu for switching to things because it's a little more convenient than right-clicking to get through things. And I'm less likely to skip over what I wanted and have to go through three or four times. I have a terrible habit of doing that. Alright, let's head to the Oak Tree Mall. Alright, so we have to turn left on Rose to head east, because we're southbound. Let's crank it up, because it's near the end of the street. I think it's after 9th Street. Slow it down a bit, don't want to miss it. Perfect driving for once. The first thing that strikes you is that the car belongs to Marie. Then you see the paramedics working over a body. Panic begins to overwhelm you as you race to the ambulance. Oh shit. Oh no, you think. This just can't be. Not sweet cheeks. And it looks like she has a broken chain in her hand. We're ready. If you're gonna go, you better climb in, officer. Oh, we must. We might have missed the chance to get that chain. Marie is rushed to light and general emergency, where doctors begin the race to save her life. They work through the night, fighting to stabilize Marie's condition. Sunny spends hours of agony in the waiting room. Although they manage to save her life. Marie remains in a coma. When he's finally allowed to see her, Sonny holds her hand until the pre-dawn hours, hoping and searching for some sign she'll come back to him. Four twelve a.m. Officer Barnes, I'm Doctor Wagner, the resident neurosurgeon. I'm sorry to say that your wife's condition is still quite serious. She's suffering from internal injuries sustained from multiple stab wounds. Wow, his mouth is moving fast. How long she will remain in a coma is anyone's guess. In my experience, the presence of a loved one urging the patient back from the void is an incalculable asset. We're doing all we can for her physically. But you might be the only one who can reach her now. The nurse found this chain clutched in your wife's hand. Oh, there we go. Sergeant Bonds, you look beat. You really should go home and try to get some rest. There's nothing to be done for your wife right now. We can all feel good about the fact that Marie is alive. Marie, please come back, baby. I can't go on without you. You fight to pull yourself together. Uh, I've got to go now, babe. You need your rest. It's been a rough night. You talk gently to your wife, hoping that some part of her hears you. So hopefully that was good. Can we hold her hand? Nope. All right, let's hit the road. 
we'll be sure to come back and visit her from time to time. I'll get that bastard that who did this, babe. I promise. As a fellow officer drives you back to your car at the mall, you fight to focus your rage, grief, and sense of violation that something into something you can live with. What you end up with is a burning desire to find and crucify the slime that hurt your wife. Somebody out there picked the wrong man to mess with. Looks like another one bites the dust, eh? I understand you were here before they removed the victim. Did you catch any dying words? Notice any signs of sexual assault? Anything at all? Oh man, it's got to load Sonny's response. Responding to your silence, the reporter says. Well, if you don't want to talk to me, I'll just f get the information elsewhere. Listen, you little blood-sucking piece of filth. The victim was my wife. You guys are all the same. Now get out of here before I forget that I'm wearing this badge. Oh, Sonny's turned into a badass. I'll give your paper some details, all right? How about I rearrange your face? Oh, jeez, officer. I'm terribly sorry. I'm just trying to get the facts. I thought you copped, liked that kind of loose talk. Helps keep things from getting too serious. You know what I mean? Here's my card. If there's anything I can ever help you with, officer, give me a ring, huh? Again, sorry about your wife. Nope. We got points for telling him off. <laughs> you feel a moment of remorse for your outbooks. Outburst and almost say thanks. But fortunately, the moment passes. Alright, so let's get our flashlight out and start looking around for clues. Alright, let's look around. Do I have to just walk around with it? Oh! Look at that! You can't see it in the dark. But the flashlight actually plays a crucial role in seeing that. Let's try to get it lined back up here. Come on, Sonny. There we go. You pick up what appears to be a medallion. Upon closer inspection, you recognize it to be a bronze star war medallion. Or war metal. Alright, let's take a closer look at that. On the back of the bronze star is a number. 09987. So, that's important to know. Hmm. Well, is there anything else we can find around here? Better stay clear of this area, Sonny. We're sweeping for evidence. Okay, so I guess that's all we really could... Are we allowed to look in the car? Nope. Let's get back into our car. Oh, I should probably turn the flashlight on. Oh, it's too late! Hope we don't drain the batteries. Physically and emotionally exhausted, you decide to go home and get some rest. Wow, we have a really nice house. Oh, day two, the phone's ringing. Apparently we can't make ourselves get up, though. Oh. Even half asleep, you re recognize Captain Tate's stern voice. Bonds, rise and shine, pal. I need you back in homicide today. You, We've got work to do. Report in plain clothes. Sleepily, you reply. I'll be there before 1400 hours. You hate waking up without Marie next to you. It's cold that night when she's not around. Get a bit of a shower. Aw, oh, looking pretty dapper. <laughs> Anything you could do with the bed wouldn't be any fun without Marie. See what we got in the closet. Is that points? I think so. A music box. Can we look at it? Music box. Can we do something with it? Not yet. 
But do you know what? It'll probably be something nice for Marie to have later. Can we leave here? Apparently we go out the same way to go to the shower. So the homicide office, I believe, is just across from our regular office. Yeah, everybody's in. Welcome back, Bonds. I'm sorry to hear about your wife, Marie. I'm assigning you to her case, since I know you won't be able to concentrate on anything else. Marie's case number is 199144. Where's my pen? I'll try to remember. 199144. You might want to review another stabbing case to see if there's any similarities. That case number is 199137. By the way, I want to introduce you to your new partner. Officer Bonds, meet Officer Pat Morales, your new partner. Oh, no, not you. Hey, Bond. Looks like we're stuck together, eh? Sorry if I've been a little rough around the edges lately. I'm not so bad once you get to know me. And away he goes. Do we have a desk here even? Alright, well, let's save the game here. Oh, I can't use a number pad. There weren't number pads on those keyboards, apparently. Or actually, they were probably used for moving around instead. Yeah, see, it moves the... Oh man, could you imagine? Oh hey, that's not so bad. You can actually walk around using that. Twitch emote. Anyways, I'm Zerfall. Uh, we've been playing Police Quest 3, The Kindred. And next time, we're going to check out some case files and talk to our new partner. Thanks for watching.